Hey, it's Mr. Allred. We're continuing talking about linear functions, more so writing them than anything. Um, so here, uh, just a reminder, what we have going on is we're writing things in a function notation with mx plus b, uh, the b being a starting amount. and m being a rate of change. So let's see here, what we got? Alex has a starting weight of 230 pounds and goes on a diet where he loses two pounds a week. Write a function to, calc to calculate his weight after so many weeks of dieting. So let's see here, W has been very popular here, but we can use, ooh, weight and weeks so let's um use pounds and weeks so we'll let p represent pounds after w weeks w has been really popular um so let's see here he has a starting weight of 230 pounds so that's the b and he's going to lose two pounds per week so that's going down by two every week so our P of W could be negative 2W plus 230, which means that it calculates how much weight he has lost and then puts that with the 230 to net it up. So let's see. Another way of writing this would be 230 starting weight minus 2 pounds every week. So 2 times W or two times the number of weeks would give us a total that we're subtracting off there. Next example. At 4 p.m. on a winter day, Marcus measures five centimeters of snow on the ground. The weatherman says to expect it uh, to keep snowing at a rate of three centimeters per hour. <clears throat> Quite a blizzard. Write a function to predict the amount of snow on the ground h hours after 4 p.m. So what do we know here? We know that it's going to start the b being 5 centimeters. And we know that the rate, the m, is going to add 3 per hour. So let's see. What do we want to call this thing? We can call it snow. So we can call it s of h so snow per hour okay. so what do we have we have a rate of three times the number of hours for three centimeters every hour plus the original five so s of h equals three h plus five that's the amount of snow h hours from four o'clock and it says, based on this function, at what time should Alice expect there to be 20 centimeters of snow on the ground? So, snow is S. So, we're kind of creating an equation if we do that. Usually, we're, we're thought of given, being given a time or an input, like hours here, and figuring out how much snow there would be. But to answer the question there, we'll say, well, there's looking for 20 inches. So, let's let that be the number of snow, amount of snow. So now we have an equation to solve. Bring the 5 over, and we get h equals 5. So 5 hours after 4 p.m., but it says at what time? So 4 plus the 5 equals 9 p.m. There should be 20 centimeters of snow. Now that's just assuming it stays linear. All right, so let's look at some variations here. So I've got write a function based on the input and output values of the table. So the first one here, if we look at it, we have when x is 0, f of x is 10. So when x is 0, that's the starting amount. So basically that tells us that b equals 10. And then if we start looking at the change here, first of all, it's important that x is going up by 1. But as x goes up by 1, f of x, or the output, goes up by 5, 
So that means M would be 5. It goes up by 5 each time. So the function here, we'll just call it f of x, since that's the way it's labeled, equals 5x plus 10. And you should be able to go back and plug these x values in and get the y values that go with them. The next one, pretty good start. When x is 0, the output is 12. So the starting amount is 12. Now, interesting here, on this side it's going up by 2. So remember what I did to you with the graph. But this is going up by 2. And over here, the output is going up by 4. So the M would be, it goes up 4 for the output every time it goes up 2 for the input. So that rate of change is 2 per unit because it's 4 for every 2 units. So we'll write that function as f of x equals 2x plus 12. And again, we show to plug these numbers in. So if we plug in 8, 2 times 8 is 16, plus the 12 would be 28. So a variety of ways we can start writing these functions. If we don't have words, we can have tables. And lastly down here, where we started this journey, we can have graphs. So we're going to write a function based on the graph. <clears throat> so let's see here. This first one here is a temperature uh, over time. So initially when the time is zero, we have that the temperature is 82. Okay. And then that would be the starting amount, or B. And then if we talk about the rate of change, here is the 1 right here. So let's see what happened. It went down 2 and over 1. So you got to pay attention to the scale. So it decreased by 2 as it traveled over 1. So that M or that rate of change is negative 2. So the function could look something like temperature. Whoop, what's happening here? Temperature per hour. And it starts at 82 and goes down by 2 per hour. So let's just see. If that works, we should be able to plug in the 4 for H and get 74. So if we plugged in 4 for H, 2 times 4 is 8. So 82 minus 8 would be 74. So that function is working. Let's do the other one over here. Um, saving money. So the amount of money saved over a number of weeks. So it starts off at $30. Um, and then if we follow it across at one week, it looks like we have, read the scale, 35. Um, it looks like a straight line. So in this case, it looks like the B is 30. And the M, the rate at which it's increasing, is 5. So let's say we would have um, dollars or money, dollars of weeks, so D of W. So what do we have? We have $5 being thrown in every week plus the original 30. So look at the starting amount and look at the rate, and then you can write your function.